Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom. This question 36 is the last of a series of five questions that I've been working through that came um, from the latest New South Wales HSC math exam. Um, and these questions were common to both the advanced and standard exams. Um, I came across them when reading a newspaper article and thought it would be an interesting exercise to work through them and kind of see what they were all about. Uh, this last question uh, is actually on statistics, which happened to be one of the uh, more one of, one of my favourite subjects as I was working through university. Um, so I kind of come across a question like this and um, find it potentially interesting to work through. But uh, I can I can acknowledge that most people would um, kind of come across a question like this and find it quite. Um, daunting or potentially daunting, particularly this question which um, kind of just throws a whole bunch of information and terminology at you and then you have to try and work out what to do. So uh, let's read through it and see, see what, what's going on. So we're told that a cricket is an insect, uh, the male cricket produces a chirping sound, a scientist wants to explore the relationship between the temperature in degrees Celsius and the number of cricket chirps heard in a 15 second time interval. Um, so once a day for 20 days, the scientist collects data. Based on 20 data points, the scientist provides the information below. And then we're given a whole bunch of information. So the first thing we're told is we get this box plot of the temperature data. Um, we're told that the mean temperature in the data set is 0.525 degrees Celsius below the median in the data set. And we're also told that a total of 684 chirps was counted when collecting the 20 data points. So the scientist fits a least squares regression line using the data. Um, X is the temperature in degrees Celsius and Y is the number of chirps heard in a 15 second time interval. And the equation for the line um, is Y is equal to negative 10.6063 plus BX. And B is the slope of the regression line. Uh, we're also told that the least squares regression line passes through the point x bar y bar where x bar is the sample mean of the temperature data and y bar is the sample mean of the chirp data. So that is a lot of information to take in, uh, particularly in an exam where you've already done 35 questions and you're on to question 36. So I can see how this might have been a challenging question for a lot of students. Um, over the page we're then given the question which is to calculate the number of chirps expected in a 15 second interval when the temperature is 19 degrees. And we want to give our answer to correct to the nearest whole number. All right, so where to begin? Um, ultimately, we know that the regression line, this line um, y is equal to negative 10.6063 plus bx. That's what's going to give us our, our chirps because we know that um, y is equal to the number of chirps per 15 second interval and um, x is equal to the temperature. And we're given that um, x is equal to 19 degrees. When x is equal to 19, we want to know what y is and, and y will be equal to negative 10.6063 plus b times the 19. So really we've just got this unknown b that we need to work out. Now the way we can work that out is by using the last piece of information that we're told which is that um, this regression line passes through x bar y bar. So we know, what we know is that um, y bar will be equal to negative 10.6063 plus b x bar. So if we can um, work out y bar and x bar from the information we're given, we can then solve for b, put that b back into this equation, and then get the number of chirps when the temperature is 19. So that's ultimately what we have to do. So whilst it was or it seemed like we were being bombarded with statistical information, at the end of the day, the task is fairly simple. Solve for a number, plug it into a formula, and get the result. Now, first, if I start with x bar, we're told 
that the mean of the temperatures is equal to the median minus 0.525. Now, in the box plot, we can gauge the median by looking at the center line, and we see that that median was 22 degrees. So if we then take off from that 22, the 0 0.525, we then get our X bar. So the key to um, being able to work this out was to understand what a median is and where that median sits in a box plot. And that way we can get the 22 and then just take off the 0.525, which we were just given in the information. So if I get my calculator, 22 minus 0 0.525 is 21. 0.475. So that's x bar. Now we just need y bar and we've got everything we need. <clears throat> now y bar is going to be equal to 684 on 20. And we know that because we're told that there were 684 chirps in the, um, the 20 samples that were taken. That was the total. So on average, the number of chirps in the 15 second intervals is 684 divided by 20, which is 34.2. So again, ultimately getting the X and Y bar, it came down to understanding, um, well, for X bar medians and for Y bar, simply the definition of an average. Um, so now that we have those two points, we can solve for B because um, we can say 34.2 is equal to negative 10 Point six zero six three plus B times 21.475. So B will be equal to um, the 34.2 plus the 10.6063 and all of that divided by the 21.475, which equals, key that in my calculator, so 34.2 plus 10.6063 divided by 21.475. So I get 2.086 and so on. So I'll just store that. So now what, what we can conclude is when x is equal to the 19 degrees, y will be equal to negative 10.6063 plus B, which is 2.086 times 19, which equals, so we'll take what we've got, times 19, minus 10.6063, and we get um, 29.036 and so on. And we're asked to give it to a whole number, so that's going to be equal to 29 chirps, per 15 second in, uh, interval. And that's that question done. So yeah, as I mentioned before, um, you know, when I see a question like this, I don't find it too daunting because I've done quite a lot of statistics over the years, but um, I can definitely see how um, a student could feel simply bombarded by information. But uh, my advice would be, as with most exam questions, um, um, then they're, they're, they're not trying to trick you. I've never really seen an exam in all of the years I've been doing the exams where the writer is like going out of their way to trick you. So um, the key really is to stay calm, just work through methodically and, and usually um, uh, the question's able to kind of fall out from the information that you know and the techniques that you know. So hopefully for this question that that'll made sense and it was easy enough to follow along and uh, tick boom.